Hi, Aditi. How are you? Very well. How are you? Very well. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. How are you doing? Very well. I think all curious and excited to know about the student space, and I think the space requires so much of conversation, especially the mental health. So can't wait to get started. Absolutely, I couldn't agree more. It's a very, very important topic, and we are very happy to kick this off with you. So let me—we've got a, a decent audience and more people joining. So why don't we start? Uh, let me introduce uh, myself quickly. Uh, Lal, I'm the CEO and co-founder of Your Space, 2016, and currently have hostels across 10 plus cities. And this topic is very close to my heart. We have about 6,000 plus students who stay with us wow. in our. um and i think student mental health is a crucial topic for us to address just for everybody in the audience we have aditi surana joining us uh, she is a behavioral analyst coach podcaster and also the founder of one of a kind gym apt which is a mental gym aditi that sounds fantastic thank you so much for joining us like to tell us thank a little you. bit your organization and what you're doing so uh, i have been working as a high performance coach for a very long time almost uh, now 19 years but the fact that pandemic required so much of group attention so much of conversation around mental health we thought we do so much for physical workout right especially during the pandemic all workout went online and people were gymming and you know like doing all healthy things we said nobody is talking about doing the same workout for our minds and we required that so much more than anything else at this point in time so mental Absolutely. gym as a concept is about building the skill set needed for you to work on your emotions on a daily basis for example anxiety uh, yeah. we spoke a lot about it during the pandemic but if you uh, know the students going through that you know it, it becomes really overwhelming it it's paralyzing and you feel i don't know what to do in this moment and how would i move forward here If you have already practiced, what would you do when you fall down like that emotionally? If you practice, if you have like five ways, five tools to look at it, then immediately the same problem becomes much easier. Immediately you you are not walking into it. It's like an exam. Either you walk into it unprepared, or you already have read the syllabus. You already know what to expect. Now, when you are confronted with a question, you are not left wondering what to do. you yes. have gone through it and same toolbox is created in a mental gym for mental conversations i think that sounds fantastic because have, over my experience of last 5 years when i've met so many of colleagues and i think there's so much pressure they face right there's obviously the pressure of leaving home for the first time and staying yeah. uh, alone staying in a separate place staying with uh, people not met before adjusting to a new college life um, there's a lot of peer pressure that we've all already uh, know of and her. i feel a lot of family pressure um as well um uh, given how competitive the world has become it's uh, it's important for the students to take care first recognize that mental health is important and also take active steps to take uh, to take care of it what are some of the things you would suggest uh for the gen z millennials some of the things that they could uh, they should be doing uh, uh cope better with this See the first thing the most important one is acceptance because mm-hmm. uh, as a as a generation that you know the young generation the young adults that are coming into the college space or work space for them things were in a way provided for they didn't have to struggle with the basic necessities that probably a generation prior to that happened so mm-hmm. their idea of life and their exposure is so high that they believe and they genuinely know that they deserve a great life Mm-hmm. so the beginning point by itself is very high yeah. you're not beginning with like okay let me look at what the three kids in my my society are doing or five kids in my family are doing they have an exposure of the world so they look at a 16 year old sitting in in say a london and doing something phenomenal and they compare themselves with that possibility yeah. that by itself means the bar is very high absolutely and no matter what you do to achieve it when your standards are so high when your bar is so high you constantly feel you're lacking mm-hmm. right so it is not always that they're lacking but because you want they demand so much of them that the lack becomes more you know literally like that that gap, gap. becomes more so yeah. uh please 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 set out for your next possible goal and i know the pressure is very high and it happens that everybody is somehow managing to be high performers already 
but set out your realistic goals that is very very important it's amazing to have optimistic ideas but in the process of having those optimistic ideas you're just going to die every day then there is a problem then it just takes away from the whole idea of enjoying what you're doing absolutely and i think college life is a is a bit about both right it's also covering what are some of your strengths and weaknesses you may have come into your first year of college being the kind of subject you would like or this is a that you want to build and i think part of college is exploring all of that um realizing that what you maybe came in with the expectation that changed and you need you have to have the courage to accept that change um and you know try something uh, new i when i uh, uh, the pressure that was on me when i studied for that right some of these entrance exams also create pressure on you um it already the pressure that we take on ourselves for um exactly like rightly as you pointed out right and then on top of that the expectations uh, um additional leave. so the an- another part of anxiety it's a pattern so we hmm. all get triggered into anxiety not every stressful situation is anxiety causing anxiety inducing and yeah. for example you know certain exams or certain subjects everybody might be getting worried about but you know you you have it covered and no matter how complicated the the papers are or like you know the the exams are you okay with it because you know you you know it and then there are yeah. other things you have you are not confident about so like that similarly in life there are some areas that you might not have any any grip over and there you feel more anxious other areas you know i know how to deal with it and then you are not anxious so identify your triggers that is very important because and how do you know you have a trigger on something i was once just come once once you get triggered in an area or in a particular you know situation like someone speaking with you in an authoritative manner could be mm-hmm. a trigger for some people uh you know things not happening the way you had exactly imagined them to be that could be a trigger your yeah. idea of perfection you know achieving that result the way you had imagined and you know working towards it that could be a trigger so failure could be a trigger not having the kind of success you want could be a trigger rejection could be a trigger but for every person there are two to three main triggers mm-hmm. you have to know what is yours right? and you have to recognize that yourself mm-hmm. have that why we're also right. having this call uh and it's okay to accept that uh, you may have a trigger it's not a negative um there's a positive uh outcome that could come out of it realizing that it's a trigger and uh, and out of the right because we talked about the competitive i feel even uh, pressure from family um you know anxiety even for parents um i have Hi. spoken to so many to uh, drop their uh, you know uh, student uh, drop the students off to hostel for the first time i can imagine what they are going through right the, the, you've lived with us as a now you're but you should city- yeah but i was just thinking about your career and your your choice of running this business isn't it interesting is like every child coming in it's like a dramatic filmy scene everybody you must be doing the behavioral analysis on your level i'm sure actually that is one of the reasons actually nidhi and i could identify with so much um, i went to iim calcutta to study for higher education uh, nidhi went to oxford to do her masters right so we had seen our parents my father in particular to drop me to another city till then i had lived at home um we could identify with what they were feeling and we see that reflected in everyone who comes into us so it becomes our responsibility to assure that parent that mother the father or the even the brother dropping his younger sister off sure. they have to take care of them right it's a safe environment um to allow her to explore i mean that's how the name came up as well to allow her to explore how to create this as you know their own space yeah and i think yeah, I, you know as we're talking about this space i also feel the issue with space is a big concern with younger you know young adults nowadays because for them when they look at their their personal choices are very clear and i slightly hate to accept it but i also feel they are way more aware than we were when we were of their age you not know, they they know their preference <laughs> they know the kind of authors they like the kind of music that they like which leads to specific it's like you walk into a restaurant and you are not okay with eating like whatever available dish that they're serving you know exact preference that you have thereby 
the possibility of being disappointed is also very high so Correct, but see positive and a negative i yes. i couldn't agree with or the students who walk into our hostels are far more confident than i think i was at that <laughs> age my friends I'm were sure. fantastic sure. they want um they've done their full research whether it's on courses whether it's on careers they want to follow after 3 or 4 years so i think the access to resources is immense and i feel like mental health should be a part of all of that it should be almost okay. something that follow they uh, practice on a day to day uh, basis it's also about being able to provide an outlet right it's not something that's top of your mind all the time but when you do need help you can at least reach out to someone or talk about it i'm so happy that you're having this conversation and you're considering the mental health part of you know their well being as an important area i think every organization every school every college must have this conversation more seriously especially now post pandemic where the pressure points change you know all that we thought was exciting and we could carry ourselves and we can you know literally walk into a group of friends to feel good about ourselves everything was taken away from us now yeah. we have to rebuild it and re- that is almost rebuilding your identity now what a college student is going through like when they shift their city when they come to a new place they are rebuilding their identity on top of that now they are slightly confused about what they exactly like and who they exactly are the conflict is way stronger than what we can understand on a surface Ad- level actually the pandemic has added a whole new dimension of uh, mental health anxiety right? students who come into college um, may actually graduate without ever having stepped into a, a, a campus and oh, a sure. part of education like you rightly said is sort of their peer interaction right it's added a lot of stress to them because they've now started thinking we've not been for we've not we've not had fun on campus in college because we are <laughs> and we are <laughs> so they are missing out have you seen anything specific um, or any specific technique that we could tell students who have watching us live or who are sitting in, uh, about things that they could do um, to relieve some of this stress and anxiety so during the pandemic we started an initiative uh, a social initiative where we spoke about journaling technique and this is a three step journaling technique that people can uh, simply choose simply be practice and the steps are that you might have tried writing a diary is not a new thing in journaling because body can become a great pacifier a great companion when it comes to feeling calm uh, feeling dealing with the problem so mind moving very fast going at a lightning speed coming up with all possibility that things can go wrong and how you can get into a trouble uh, how things can absolutely backfire but when you start writing about it you can't write at the same pace yeah. so something changes something absolute so you to write that one thing and don't type just physically write because that slows you down and anxiety and speed they're best friends right like the faster you think more anxious you get so it actually breaks the cycle so the three step process goes like you ask yourself a solution oriented question not a okay. question that only brings out the problem which happens mostly when we do dear diary kind of a process we write or uh, why this person was sad with me why mama didn't listen to me why how could she do this now these all things make you relive the experience that you have gone through but when mm-hmm. you ask a solution oriented question is like i'm upset about the situation but what can i do to change my response absolutely so like whoa oh i can change my response you don't know this but when you ask that question to your brain suddenly without your knowledge it's like a google search engine it starts looking for all the possible ways in which you can change things and that becomes a practice even when you are in the middle of a fight or a conversation with some time by trying the solution oriented approach you can start changing that thing second step here is to practice a stroke that i call calm sutra it helps you calm down so i'm going to show it to the audience this is other way around Uh, okay i'm going to teach you that quickly uh, yes, so are you up for a challenge What so you that? should always do this uh, with a ballpoint pen i'm going to use a marker so that it can be seen properly but always okay. a ballpoint pen when you do the stroke on a ruled paper okay when you do the stroke there are five things to keep in mind i'm going to show you the stroke in large so you know what i'm talking about i'm going to get my ruled paper and notebook as well i'll i'll love to do this with you 
<laughs> okay so there are five instructions uh, oh. the stroke always starts on the top okay okay so it's like a smooth stroke like it's like s formation being done okay. together or like infinity sign or number 8 whatever you want to call it but it always starts on the top and then you go with the flow as you're doing the practice make sure that both the loops here are open all loops should be open in the stroke okay. so sometimes okay. when your mind is feeling all like struggling to pay attention you you cannot do it and that's a sign but don't analyze it just get back to the formation and pay attention so first instruction start on the top second one all loops are open third always end on the line always and end and stay between the lines between the lines always so i'm going to just do that for clarity you can also have little space on the top so it can be lit shorter also whatever is your normal writing size the fourth I'm instruction is pause pause, pause, pause. let me no no pause Fine. let me tell the instructions pause 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 huh? no it's not fully correct let me tell you the instructions oh. so the first is you start on the top second all loops open third you end on the line fourth is you do it as long as you have that flow going If okay. your flow stops, you stop the stroke. You don't push it further. If you start a new one, it doesn't matter how long or short the stroke is. All that matters is how much in flow you are. And the fifth instruction, which is the most important one, is you breathe slightly deeper than your normal breath while doing the practice. Okay. So we're gonna give it a shot one more time. This time, when you do it, tell me how you feel. Okay. okay. If our viewers are gonna go ahead and do it, I'm gonna hold the stroke. It's very simple. You go ahead. You do the stroke. Let me just explain yeah. the instructions again. Start on the top. Make sure all the loops are open. End on the line at the bottom here, and make sure that you continue the flow. So whenever your hand stops, just stop and start a new stroke. It does not matter how long, short the stroke is. Lastly, make sure that you breathe slightly deeper than your current breath. While doing the stroke, your mind will go all over the place. Let it go where it has to. One of the thoughts will be to come back to the stroke. Pay attention to the stroke. With that thought, simply come back and just practice the stroke. You will be surprised just doing the stroke for half a page. How suddenly your body feels calmer. And when your body is calm, your mind starts following it without knowing why it is happening. You're like, oh, I should be stressed about it. And now you are struggling to be as stressed as you were three minutes back because you have practiced the stroke. God, how do you feel But now? I said earlier, uh, when I was doing it, I was wanting to get it perfect, right? I wanted to get the circles perfect, and obviously, instantly my mind started wandering. But then the next line has come out um, easier than sure. before. Sure, sure. See, this is what I started a fresh one, and here is when I lost. I lost trust. I stopped and then I started again and here so I was much more focused on getting this right. Second one is so much better. The only yeah. thing is you you dragged your hand. So wherever your hand stop, just pick up the pen and start a new stroke. So even if yeah. you do three strokes that's fine, but just make sure that you do it in a manner that it kind of creates the flow. So that's step about number two. Down breath and Sorry? you know stay within it. I think it's about slowing down and taking a deep breath while you're also being so most students uh, most uh, young adults cannot meditate they cannot like you know, meditation is a phenomenal thing that you know all of us ideally should jump on and should be able to do but because and also we can't blame them they are stimulated with the gadget things so much that the opposite of it is not easily available the meditation part so when they sit for meditation the mind is still in that activity So this yeah. I called handwriting yoga or handwriting meditation because here the activity of writing keeps your mind engaged and the mm -hmm. mind then gets space to calm down, which otherwise does not happen because I like or if I'm only closing my eyes, what am I supposed to do? Here the activity just gives you like an easier guideline for you to follow the path, which is something that during the pandemic, just during the pandemic, I've been teaching this for all 19 years of my career. But during the pandemic, around twenty thousand people learned this stroke. Oh mm -hmm. wow, that's fine. Spoke, yeah, and it was phenomenal for us to hear the stories. And from like so beautiful when people say, "Oh, during the uh, COVID times, I I didn't know my mind was going." Especially the first two COVIDs were also yes. affecting people's way of thinking and worrying about everything. So that time, having the stroke to practice was really helpful. 
So that's in stage two. The third stage is the question that we asked in the beginning. You, for mm-hmm. example, if I'm upset about this, what can I do to change my response? Now, after doing the S stroke, you respond to the question. Ah, because okay. if you are aggravated and you write, you'll only write what you're thinking about, right? This shouldn't happen. I should have all of that. But when you put like a space to feel calm, the step to feel calm in the middle, it just suddenly gives you little perspective to look at the same thing in a different light. And that is phenomenal. That is a game changer because there you are not only fighting the thoughts, you're also changing something and you feel as if almost like an entire session is done with yourself. So that's your three step process. I also have a podcast which is called Daily Mental Fitbit. It is a three minutes bite sized little conversation about what can you change, how you can look at things differently. I think that also could be a way of looking at it because when you every day, little by little, talk about things that you can change about your life Mm -hmm. and observe that little perspective shift and seeing how amazing it is, you know, how suddenly you don't feel sad about your mother not approving you or the fear of missing out of FOMO as Gen Z calls it is not that big a concern anymore. Then you start your, your mind starts moving faster in the mental health space. And I think the important thing that I pick up from what you just said is to take small steps. I think, you know, you, we sometimes make it feel that we're going to now meditate for one hour and we'll take time away or we'll do this. The small Really small changes that you can make that um, that uh, that go a long way. I mean, I got a personal example. Just like you said, right? The first months of the pandemic were a lot of anxiety, anxiety for your personal health, for your family's health, anxiety about the business, of course. Okay. I think one thing that helped me was to actually take ten minutes out. And I understood what meditation means, right? But for me, taking things ten minutes, staying away from my phone. I, even that in itself can be so relaxing and, and calming. Um, and you don't realize how attached you are to your gadget. Kids also <laughs> always on their phone. Um, and so am I. I'm guilty of it as well. But I think putting that away for 10 minutes, even especially when you wake up in the morning, not to look at your phone before you go to sleep, not to look at your phone for half an hour. All the things uh, are, quite, um, are quite, kind of quite helpful. Uh, to, to, I think the only thing I would like to add is that, or if if these things are not work, pick up, talk to someone. We at I'm at Alana or space have tied up with your door it offers a 24 seven mm-hmm. help. Um, and it's important because it's 24 seven because you know you may not be talk about it and might not want to talk about your parents and your existing friends. You want a third party view. Uh, that's what we've you know offered. To uh, our space students because I think that's important to give them that professional to talk to at the other end of the line. So I was about exist- to say I was yeah. about to say talking to a professional has a different impact because when you talk mm-hmm. to a friend or a family member or someone who even loves you they have a certain idea of who you are and when you talk to a professional they don't have those ideas so they talk to you on a neutral ground and they're not biased about your success from the past or your failures from the past and I think that's why these conversations are so powerful. So I'm so Absolutely. happy that you are cultivating that space. It's wonderful. Yeah, you have to take the stigma out of it as well, and sort of give the opportunity if someone wants to, t- uh, you know, explore that, that. That is available. I mean, while we're having the conversation, tell the audience if there are any questions for us or me. Please feel free to write it in the chat box, and we'd be uh, we'd be happy to take it. Point I was making is, I think it's it has to be an open. Concept you take the stigma around it you have to not with what i've seen with millennials and you can confirm me is that you cannot force anything on them i think you have to give the option they have to come and and choose it but they provide everything if they so choose to uh, uh i think it. forcing anybody to do anything has gone out of the window like we don't know like we can't do that like even if you're talking to a little child now huh? You have to ask whether you are okay doing this. Would you like to eat it? And I think as a culture, it's a nice thing. And I remember my mother would going like, you know, in Marathi, we call it dhapata. You're like, Kha chup chap. And you know, that, that would have happened. But now we can't do that. We don't do it, which is nicer in that sense that you're not forced. But creating an environment, whether you're forced or you're not, for you as a, as a student, if you're building your life and, you know, how making a career or be- becoming successful is your priority. 
being mm-hmm. liked and accepted by your friends is your priority having the body that people desire you for is your priority mm-hmm. similarly all these things can function if your mind is available for you to function properly if your mind is not available no matter how good you look how successful you are in your career or how amazing friend circle and family you have you won't be able to enjoy it and i think that is what we got to keep it you know it's like walking into a a huge uh, like in a buffet where in a restaurant everything is available but what if you're not hungry or the day when you don't feel like eating anything everything available won't be tasty so if you want to have the appetite to enjoy life then mental health is a way to go about it and that's why we got to do something so as you said taking small steps is the way to go about it doing something really small but doing it every day like yeah. 10 minutes that's distancing. all you require yeah. yeah and and if you think so for example when i talk about keeping the phones away gen z goes like no but we love our phones that's okay if you don't want to do that download apps on your phone and do that it doesn't matter whatever yeah. works for you but just 10 to 15 minutes to commit to this space is all you require to move forward in that direction when you look when you think that is only 10 to 15 minutes a day right uh, goes away anywhere and i can tell you having to spend 10 to 15 minutes, it completely changes your uh, perspective yeah, it's like you could work out if you wanted the ideal uh, you know if you wanted to look a certain way you have to also go to a mental gym <laughs> <laughs> Uh, to better things and the perspective exactly i i some really helpful tips aditi this was uh, fantastic quickly check the audience and if there are um if there are any uh, questions uh, for us that we can take i'm also looking if i can see the questions i think you have that access it was so nice to talk about this space because i have many parents who ask me that what should we do what should we do about the kids it's a it's a big deal in the sense because they really want to be there but they don't know how they don't know where to begin now as as you, shubha you just mentioned that you cannot simply force your kids so creating option is the way to go about it but i also feel being mentally calm yourself is also crucial if you are hyper if you are stressed and you are anxious and you are telling your child to calm down it doesn't work so if you think that your child needs to look at things in a calmer manner holistic manner then yeah. tougher but you probably have to begin it with your own journey and that is important adopt so much body language if you are if, if you are being aggressive or the parent is also emotional and that kind of translates as well i think that the exercise you mentioned earlier to take a step back take a deep breath think about it just calm your mind before you will go so so far we have a question for you aditi what is the mental fitbit and can you explain that so mental fitbit is a 3 minute podcast that is available on spotify on apple google podcast any platform that you listen to your podcast from and if you're not into podcast listening yet please do because there's so many experts talking about such phenomenal things uh our topic being mental health we thought what if we create a bite sized conversation so just 3 minutes in a day start your day with a conversation like that or in the middle of the day but thinking about so there is a meditation there is a story for gratitude where you people have people write our listeners write to us where they felt this immense sense of gratitude and all those points are every day different conversation makes you think about your situation in life in a better light in a positive light to deal with your emotions with more equipped tools that's the podcast about so do check it out it's called daily mental fitbit and where can one access that spotify google uh spotify podcast will have it so i think most gen z are on spotify already but if you are still an apple podcast listener you just type that name uh, or type my name aditi surana you will find daily mental fit So guys i think you really should check a 3 minute of a podcast all of you should be able to take your time to absolutely to start uh, doing joining your mental gym as well and start it on it if there i don't see uh, any other questions i'm going to quickly check okay thank you thank you so much
Thank you so much, Aditi, for your time and for the very Hello. helpful. Hope at your space to keep the conversation going. So thank you for that. Thank you. Thank for you. This. Bye bye. Bye everyone. Bye everyone.